Hi everyone, it's Julie at thisbeautifulfarmlife.com and today is an overcast day at the farm. It's a great day for filming outside. So I thought I would give you a little update on how it's going with our Back to Eden garden. So before I go into our successes and our failures, I just wanted to give you a brief explanation of Back to Eden gardening. So Back to Eden gardening is gardening with the way that nature um, builds itself when it's undisturbed by man. So if you were to go out into the forest, you would see that there are layers and layers on the soil of the, the things that come from the trees and the bushes and the weather and everything that comes down. And those layers on the soil are there to make that soil rich and growing. Man is not out there tilling up and fostering the growth of forests. They are just doing their thing um, growing on their own and being abundant and they have been for thousands of years since creation and so we uh, The back to Eden method is to look at that and try to emulate that in our gardens So the first principle is that you're not tilling your garden. You're only um, layering in your garden and so And so we stopped tilling in our garden um, a few years ago and then my husband who's the farmer loves to till so every once in a while he's got to get that rototiller out and go again but this year we said no more, no more tilling. And so um, we're just layering now and planting in the soil without disturbing it each spring. We started that years ago um, with Elliot Coleman. I read books from his years ago. And so I started it in parts of the garden, but we've never done the complete garden that way. So this is the first year to really say um, no tilling. The second feature of the Back to Eden Garden is that you're putting in nutrients and compost and in our case it's coming mostly from um, composted chicken manure and composted garden waste. So that's what we've done. Uh, we've added all those layers in. And the third really key component of Back to Eden Gardening is the deep mulch. And the mulch needs to be the whole tree ground up or the whole bush ground up. Leaves, roots, dirt, bark, uh, wood, everything there together. And so your mulch is a real good mix. It's called a dirty mulch. It's not clean like bark. Um, we've tried different things over the years, not understanding that fully. I use some um, bark chips in small quantities, um, but we never had the success and that's because of the, the way they leach um, nutrients from the soil. So this year we're fully back to Eden. We're fully mulched and non-till. So that's the background of Back to Eden Gardening. Now, for successes and failures. Our, our biggest failure this year had to do with earwigs. I don't think that had anything to do with our Back to Eden deep mulch method because I had trouble the last two years as well and I have them in other places in my yard um, causing issues too. So I don't think they just came in with the mulch. Um, I'm not sure yet whether the mulch fostered their um, ability to hide under the soil and come up or not, but we had a really tough spring, especially in our beans, uh, our peas, um, and just a little bit in our lettuce and our beets. But those, those things, especially the beans, could hardly get out of the ground and they were being chewed off. And uh, we finally persevered and planted and planted and you'll see that they finally are up and growing and they're climbing up the the fences but it's pretty late for us we would normally be picking beans by now but um, and our peas would be, be done and we're just now picking peas because we had to try so many times um, they did not bother any of the peppers or tomatoes onions any of those things they didn't bother even my lettuce um, only just a tiny bit and so we we um, made through made it through okay in those crops so besides the beans our other failure was we tried to grow melons on this um, bent over uh, um, cattle panel that you see here um, right behind me. We were going to grow melons up both sides over the arch and make them um, hang down and support the melons underneath. But we started with melon starts and all of them died quickly and we think it was because of the earwigs but we're not totally positive and we tried to reseed them and we couldn't even get them to come up and and make it uh, more than a few days. So we actually have another garden that our sons have done and I'll show you that in a few minutes. And it's got the melons in it now and they're doing really, really good. So 
hopefully we'll get some watermelon and cantaloupe and honeydew off of those. So that was our second failure. Our third failure was in the area where we have our tomatoes, peppers, cucumbers, all of that. And those things just did not thrive. They did not get eaten by the earwigs, but they did not thrive. And they're in an area of the garden that was very completely neglected last year. We did not water it or do anything with it. We had a very minimal garden last year after a very large garden the year before. Um, life just kind of got a hold of us and we didn't do very much. It was compacted. We'd had equipment in there at different times, uh, dumping things. And I think two things happened. We didn't loosen the soil enough for the amount of compaction that had happened over the, the history before. Because we didn't want to till, but we didn't do anything. And I think had we gotten in there and loosened the soil a little bit around the plants that we planted, it would have been better. So we transplanted our, all of our tomatoes in and they kind of stunted because I think they couldn't get out into the soil. The other thing is, I think we did not have enough composted chicken manure in there. Those are heavy feeders. They did not take off and so they didn't have enough feeding right at the front and so they've been a little stunted. They're starting to grow now. You can see that when we go through there, there's a little bit of light in there. Um, they're not bearing super heavy. So it's been a mix of success out there and so we're hoping to learn from our mistakes and do a little better with that next year. Now on the successes side, we've done really, really well in our raised beds. All the new raised beds that our son built for us this spring have been beautiful. We put in new soil. Um, we mixed it with peat moss and a fair amount of compost from our chickens and our garden waste that we had from last year. And they were very loose and airy because we just filled them and they did beautifully. All the things in those beds are doing beautifully. We also have had super success with our deep mulch, keeping the weeds out. Just incredible. Literally, we weed, I don't know, 20 or 30 little weeds out of the garden a week, maybe 40. It's just so minimal, I can't even hardly count it as time, maybe less than 10 minutes a week, actually um, pulling out weeds in our garden. So that has been super successful. We did put the mulch down about four to five inches deep and it's held the weeds beautifully. And we have a really dry desert climate, but we have extreme weed issues here. So this is a total miracle in my book and has made gardening just so much more pleasurable. I can come out here, I can water and enjoy the plants. I can train and trim and harvest and not have to fight those weeds every day in the hot heat in our climate here. So that's been a real success in my book and worth the whole project right there. So I'm sorry I got interrupted there and now it's a little bit brighter out so I hope that this still works out okay. Um, I did want to mention that my trellis that's right back here that we couldn't keep the melons growing on, we actually put some tomatoes on. And the tomatoes that you'll see are tomatoes that seeded, the, seeded themselves in my garden from last year. So one of the things that you'll learn about back to eating gardening if you research it at all is that there's a lot of um, plants that you just foster themselves in that deep mulch soil and those plants are really vigorous so we decided to try to keep those tomatoes that seeded themselves in the garden and we've now put them on that trellis and we're going to grow them up and see what they bear i always grow heirlooms so i'm hoping that whatever comes up is something good and useful that we had here last year so um, I'm gonna give that a try. Also in our potato patch, which is back here, um, we did dig those trenches. I think if you go back to my video uh, earlier in the spring, you'll see how we did that. We dug trenches, um, put the potatoes in, and then hilled them. So that was not totally no-till. Um, I am going to try some fall seeding of potatoes. Um, I know um, the Back to Eden guy, Paul, does that. He takes his potatoes, digs them out, takes the biggest one, puts it back in, and they overwinter in Squim, Washington. It's a little um, little bit warmer there, not quite as cold in the soil there as it is here, but I'm going to give it a try because we do occasionally have potatoes that seed over. In fact, there's one over there near those um, tomatoes right now that we let go to see what it would do. So if it works um, naturally in nature, and we're always trying to dig those little pieces of potatoes out that have reseeded themselves, then why not plant it? That's my theory. So. This fall, we will be trying to reseed some potatoes right back into those holes in the same place. I know that's a no-no, but um, God does it, so we're gonna try it. 
and uh, see how that works. So now let's go on out and we'll look at the garden that my boys put in and see what's growing up there. Okay, it's really bright out here. I hope this is okay. Um, right behind me is a little garden that my 16 and 13 year old uh, decided to do. I didn't spur this. They wanted some sweet corn and we didn't have room in the other garden. So they brought it out here and this is about 15 feet wide and I just stepped it off. It's about 170 feet long to the top. Uh, you can see way up there where that bucket is. Oh, actually beyond the bucket, it goes way up. Those are um, pumpkins way up there. So this is mostly sweet corn. Um, on this side over here was where we redid all the melons. My son who was wanting to do the melons on the arch in the garden uh, failed. So he restarted melons out here. So there's watermelon, cantaloupe and honeydew. And then this is sweet corn and I'll show you um, that it's just staggered plantings every two weeks. Um, our son is planted and I think he missed the last one because it's been really busy since we've been in harvest, but, but pretty close. He's done every two weeks all spring. Um, above that, all this over here is dry beans, pinto beans, black beans, uh, black turtle beans. So um, I think there's kalima beans. I'm not sure what else is out there. We have some dry beans in the garden. Um, the ones that are on the pole in the garden are eating beans and the low ones are all dry beans. So this is our first year to really take off on dry beans, but we do go through a fair amount of them and this is part of our um, desire to be more sustainable as a family and um, more of a homestead where we provide all of our things. So that was a goal for us this year is to grow, to grow all of our dry beans. So we'll see how that goes. Um, we might still put another planting or two in uh, if things slow down here in the next week or two that we can harvest this fall. And then way at the top, there is some giant pumpkins that the kids had uh, out here last fall as targets. Um, they were shooting them and so all the seeds came up. So they just transplanted them all up in that area. So they're all gonna be giant pumpkins and one of our boys uh, wants to sell those here this fall. So that's what we have out here. And I hope that this was helpful again. This is the mulch. This is a, a massive weed field without mulch. So you would see, I'll show you along the top of the field up there, what it looks like when we don't put mulch down. It just instantly becomes weeds at our area of the country. So um, this mulch, there's no way that these two boys could have maintained a garden this large without mulch. I think they still have not mulched around the pumpkins up there, but they've been hoeing that out. It's a small area and they're hand watering. Um, with buckets. I don't know how they've kept this alive very well because um, there's not a real good water right here. It's all hooked into our large irrigation system, but they've been watering it and faithfully taking care of it. So um, that's why the buckets are sitting around because they're doing a lot of watering with buckets. That also has kept the weeds down up in the pumpkins because they're just watering right around each plant. So, so I hope you can see the benefit of the deep mulch right here. If nothing else, it's just the time savings and the moisture um, control that it brings to this area of the garden that we wouldn't have been able to do without the mulch. So if you stuck with me through this long video, I thank you. I know it was a little longer than normal. Um, there was a lot to talk about. I hope it was beneficial to you and that you can use some of this knowledge as you go forward in your gardening in the next few months or even next year and that it is beneficial to all of you. If you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make a new video every week about fresh nourishing food, wholesome living, and simple farmhouse beauty. And this is summer, so we're getting a little bit more outside and garden. In the winter, we'll get a little bit more inside and home and sewing maybe. But I'm just hoping you're enjoying a little bit of this beautiful farm life and learning something along the way. Please let me know in the comments below if this was beneficial. If there's anything else that you want me to um, share about, about our farm or what we're doing here, um, let me know there. I would love to cover that in a video someday if I can. Be sure to click the link below to my blog. There's a lot of information over there. There's also a subscriber library. If you subscribe there, there's some little goodies that you can get that are um, additional to what people get who just step into my blog for the first time. And you can also find me on Facebook and Instagram and follow along there with what goes on every day here at our farm. So once again, thanks for joining me here at thisbeautifulfarmlife.com and we'll see you next week.